each month I write a column on the National Parkinson Foundation website called What's Hot. This month, the column is about opening the door to gene therapy and Parkinson disease and the need for refinement of the technology and the approach. Hailed as a major breakthrough for Parkinson disease research, investigators from multiple institutions throughout the United States published an important paper on gene therapy. The study was a double-blind, sham-controlled, randomized trial and was one of the largest of its type to be performed in actual Parkinson disease patients. Now, the study utilized a clever and novel technology in order to change the nature of a nucleus in the brain we call the subthalamic nucleus. The nucleus normally squirts an excitatory chemical into the brain, but it was converted to actually squirt inhibitory chemicals. Now, the investigators accomplished their goal in this study by utilizing gene transfer of what was called glutamic acid decarboxylase, also referred to as GAD, into this subthalamic nucleus region of the brain. The technique was performed on two sides of each participant's brain, and some patients received a sham surgery. Now, although the results were not as robust as what has been observed with deep brain stimulation and with other therapies, the door seems to have swung open for gene therapy approaches in Parkinson's disease. Now, the study included patients between the ages of 30 and 75 who had a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease and a very good response to levodopa therapy. Seven centers participated from across the United States, and the study used a novel technology to apply gene therapy at the bedside rather than at a usual operating room setting. Now, motor scores were measured on a scale we call the Unified Parkinson Disease Rating Scale, or UPDRS, and these were the primary outcome. 66 patients were included in the study, and 23 were assigned to receive sham surgery, and 22 assigned to get the gene therapy infusion. Now, what's very interesting about this study was that the investigators designed a completely sham procedure in order to be sure there was a difference between the gene therapy group and the sham operated group. The motor scores improved by eight points in the gene therapy group and by nearly five points in the sham group. This proved to be a significant difference favoring the gene therapy group. However, only 21 sham surgery patients and 16 gene therapy patients of the original 66 were analyzed for this primary outcome, meaning that the study was much smaller than we would have hoped for. Importantly, the adverse event and safety profile were reported as excellent, with the most common side effect being headache, which occurred in seven patients in the gene therapy group and only two in the sham group. The study authors felt that this therapy should be further explored for Parkinson's disease. Though these results were positive, patients should not come away with false impressions and with false hopes. This type of gene therapy was targeted as a symptomatic approach to address levodopa responsive Parkinson's disease issues. It was not a neuroprotective approach, nor was it a disease modifying approach. The benefits were mainly mild improvements in the motor symptom scale. Though the therapy fared better than sham, it did not perform better than deep brain stimulation performed in the same target as reported by other recent studies. The future of gene therapy for Parkinson's disease, we hope, will be bright. The lessons from early studies, such as the one published in Lancet Neurology, should point us in the right direction. Larger numbers of patients will need to be examined, outcomes optimized, and safety documented. There is an overriding concern for the future of gene therapy in long-term delayed adverse events, and we will need to carefully document their presence or absence. The trans transplant trials in Parkinson's disease patients taught us important lessons, including the appearance of delayed complications, one of which, runaway dyskinesia, proved to be a limiting issue for continuation of that type of therapy. We need to be careful as we move forward with gene therapy. Now, hopefully, gene therapy approaches can be modified to address non-medication responsive symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Remember, this current gene therapy approach was aimed at achieving symptomatic improvement of levodopa responsive or dopamine responsive Parkinson disease symptoms. The field remains, however, in desperate need of therapies 
targeting both motor and non-motor symptoms that are resistant to levodopa and other therapies. These symptoms include, but are not limited to walking, balance, speech, swallowing, cognition, mood, and sexual dysfunction. We remain very encouraged about gene therapy and its possibilities for future use in Parkinson's disease patients. This study will hopefully help to open some doors and to challenge our scientists to continue to develop and to continue to refine techniques that will target symptoms that matter the most to our Parkinson's disease patients, namely the levodopa-resistant symptoms.